Now we do actually have two methods when it comes to creating IDs, unique IDs. Recently Notion did add in a property that allows you to simply create an ID. So we'll just search for ID. As you can see, we do have this option. Now this allows you to add in a prefix. So what I'm going to do is just add in SB. The only problem with this, you're limited to what you can do when it comes to customizing your prefixes. So in this case, I can only put in a hyphen. You see, it can take that in. Now do keep in mind, it does add a hyphen at the end of it. Now when it comes to underscore or any other characters, I'm not allowed. You can see it tells you, you can only use uh, for numeric characters, so letters and numbers. So we'll take this off and we'll put this in and just click add prefix. Now this is an auto generation of your prefix and the number, you can't edit the number, you can't change it. Now the method that I've been using for a while is utilizing formulas and using the ID function. Now this part is gonna be a little bit more information than the last one. So what we're going to be doing is talking about prefixes and then we're going to be talking about slicing your ID. And I'll show you why that is in a second. So when it comes to the ID, the first thing you want to do is select the property and then we'll look for formula. And we'll just call this ID formula. And in the empty section here, we'll click on that and we can type in ID. So we're not selecting the property. What we want to look for is the function and we can just simply select the ID function and if i click done here you can see it's quite a lengthy id and that's the main reason actually we're going to be slicing it at the end of it now if i come over to this section here click on the three dots and click copy link so i'll just paste this down here if we do take a look at the link for this page it's actually the exact same you can see our id is contained within the page link so every notion page does have a unique id and this is a way of utilizing that now like i said it is a long id so a lot of people do want to slice this so i'll show you guys that towards the end of it so the first prefix we're going to go through when it comes to the function for id is similar to the last one where you're adding the text. Now in this scenario, it's going to be different because we're actually going to be able to put in whatever characters that we want. So what I'm going to do is select the properties again and select formula. So for this one, I'm going to say prefix with text. We'll bring this down to the bottom. So what we're going to do is put in double quotes and then between that, we can put in whatever text that we do want. So in similar to the other case, I'll just put in SB, but this time I'll put in underscore and I'll just say ID and a hyphen as well. So in this scenario, like I said, you can put in any character that you want. And then after that, what you want to do is add in a plus. You can add a space just for better readability if you need. It doesn't really matter if they're conjoined or spaced. So now I'll just type in ID and select the ID function. As you can see down here, it's after giving us our ID with the prefix text that we added. You can see up here, it's the exact same. And also down here. So that's it for adding a text prefix with the ID. So next we're gonna do a prefix with links. So again, we're going to add in formula And this time I'll say prefix with link. So if we head over to the browser, you can see I do have my Notion site link. So I'll copy this and I'll head back over. And then here again, I'll put in double quotes. I'll paste in my link and I'll just add in a plus and the ID function. Now this is basically going to be similar to this link here. Now you can actually see it does let you click it. So if we do click this, it brings us to the exact same page that we're on now. Now I'm sure you guys can already think of reasons for why you might need this. So we'll head back over. And then for the last one that I like to utilize when it comes to prefixes is adding a date into this. So we'll add in another formula. 
and we'll call this prefix with date. Again, bring this down. Now, when it comes to dates, you will need to have a date on a date property on your pages already. So in this scenario, what I'm going to do is just add in the create a date of this page. So in this case, we just look for the created time property. As you can see, 1st of January 2024 at 8.36 p.m. So what I can do here now is just type in format. And what we're looking for is the format date. So we'll select that. Now Notion did have a function for properties. I believe that was called prop. However, we no longer have this, which I'm quite upset about because that was actually quite handy. But anyway, we just simply need to look for this specific property. So we'll select this. And then after selecting that, we want to add in a comma. And now we can start using the general date format. And so in my case, what I like to do is keep them all together. So open up my quotes and do a YYY underscore MM underscore DD for the day underscore again and HH and then MM in lowercase. And we'll close this off. I'll also add in a hyphen. And as you can see, it's after giving us the time and date. Um, if we look up here, you can see 1st of January, 2024, 8.36, and down here, 2024, 01, which is the month, uh, 01 again for the day, and 2036 for the time. Now, if you do want to show the months, you can add in this for the shorthand, or you can add in four for the full hand of the months. I like to keep it just numeric, so I'll bring it back. And then after that, what we can do once we formatted the date is just simply add in the ID function again. And as you can see, we've prefixed it with the date of when this page was created. So that's pretty much how I utilize prefixes. The last part is just slicing these characters. Now there's three ways that you can actually slice. You can slice from the start. You can slice in between or a range and you can slice at the end of your ID. So let's start off as slicing from the beginning. So I'll add in a formula again. We're going to call this remove first four characters. So that's what I'm going to do is remove the first four characters at the beginning. What I'm actually going to do is bring this down here so we can compare them. So for the first four characters, it's very straightforward. What we need to utilize is the substring function. So we'll put in sub and you can see the substring. Now the old method of doing this is to just simply use slice. However, slice doesn't work anymore. So we, it's been replaced by substring. So we'll just bring back substring. And within this, I'm going to add in ID, open and close brackets and a comma i'll space this out and like i said we're going to remove the first four characters so we just put in the number four and we'll hit done and if we compare this you can see the original it has f9 ee and then it starts from 2d8 and so on as you can see those were the first four characters and that's been removed so the next thing we're going to do when it comes to slicing is keeping the first four characters or keeping a certain range of characters. Now range is a little bit complicated, so we'll just wait till I show you and then you can see it for yourself. So we're going to create another formula. Actually, in fact, let's just copy, duplicate this one. And I'm going to just call this keep first four characters. I'll actually just use the brackets and put in range. Actually, I'll put in the letter R so you can know that this means range. So as opposed to the previous way that we had it, what we can do is go to this first comma. After that, put in a zero and then another comma. And if we bring this up here, you can see this is after keeping the first four characters, so F9 EE. Now, when it comes to the range, let's take an example. Let's say we want to start after the first two characters, 
but then we want to end at the fourth. So basically we're going to keep the EE. So we skip the first two and then we end at the fourth one here. So if we go back into this, we can just simply change this to two. And you can see we have EE because it skipped the first two and it ended at the fourth character. So now we'll get to the last part, which is basically slicing at the end of your ID. So what we're going to do is just duplicate this one again. Now, when it comes to the last four characters, this time what we actually need to do is first get the length of the total characters because we need the length so we know how far back we should go. So instead of using the range, we're going to just remove all of this here, leave the comma. Now Notion does actually provide us with a function for getting the length of a string. So we'll just put in LEN and then we can just click on length here. And what we want to do is actually put in the ID again. Now don't forget to open and close your brackets. So what we want to do is skip the last two closing brackets because this consists of the length bracket and the ID. So we want to keep the last four. So we get the full length minus four. And as you can see, 9E, 5E is the last four characters. So for the last one, what we're going to be doing is removing the last four characters. And in this case, we will actually be using the range. So we'll duplicate this last one. And I'll just bring this up. And I'm just going to rename this. Similar to what we did before, we come over to the first comma. We put in a zero and add in another comma. And if we have a look at this, you can see it removed the last four characters. So 9E, 5E was removed. So that's basically it when it comes to how I utilize the prefixing and slicing. As you can see already, this method does allow you for a lot more customization. Now I'm sure all of you can think of a lot of different ways of adding more customization to this, but for me personally, these are all the main prefixes and slicing that I use when it comes to my notion database pages and slash items but anyway that concludes this video if you do like it don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next one